you're having a great day. Today I want to talk about the power of our words that we use every single day and our thoughts and how they affect our health. We all know we've read about the subconscious mind. We understand about the power of the subconscious mind. There's no debate about that. Whenever you think you're confused about it, just go back to why you brush your teeth every single day, why you do things out of habit. It's because the program that's in your subconscious mind keeps running on auto mode. And what we need to understand that if there are things that can affect us, can that same subconscious mind also do the reverse? And that's absolutely true. Every word we say has an impact on us, directly or indirectly. Every thought that we have, that we nurture, okay, becomes that sustained feeling. So let's do a simple exercise right now because no matter what you have, whether you have a cancer, high blood pressure, cardiovascular, you're going to have to understand the basics of this. Everything is not about nutrition, exercise and sleep. A lot is with your mind. You know, every religion in the world, I love studying different religions, not of course in detail, but I love looking for commonalities in every religion and every religion and spiritual part talks about the power of the mind and how any change that we want needs to start in the mind. This doesn't mean you use your mind to solve your disease and stuff, although some people have done that. It just means that can I get better by using and harnessing the power of my mind rather than just depending on the work of a particular drug or a medicine? How can I harness the intelligence of my mind? So let's go back to a very simple exercise. Okay, if you've been thinking about something that's sad and you keep thinking about it, how are you gonna feel? you're gonna feel sad. If something made you angry, someone said something to you that made you angry and you keep thinking about it, what is the feeling that is gonna come with that thought? It's gonna be anger. Someone gave you a compliment, appreciated you, and you keep thinking about it, what are you gonna feel? You're gonna feel happy, you're gonna feel appreciated, you're gonna feel grateful. So it's very clear, it's been established that your thoughts become your feelings. It's as simple as that. But now let's deep dive into the human body at a cellular level. Everything happens at a cellular level. Beauty is at a cellular level. You think it's your collagen, you think it's your creams, all of that stuff, well, you think it is. It's playing a small role, but that glow on your face, the health of your skin, your hair, your body, your weight, your muscle, everything starts from a cell. Life starts from a cell. So how deeply are we getting at a cellular level when we're looking at making changes in our health, body, and disease? Are we looking at disease at a symptomatic level? That what the symptoms are, or are we deep diving into the root cause, going into why did the cell misbehave? What does my body not have that requires my cells to behave in the right way? So let's talk about words. We just did a fine example of how people's words affect us. Also, now let's take that to ourselves. You look in the mirror and you keep saying, I hate my skin, I hate my face, I hate my body. Well, it's okay if you don't like it, but what are you doing about it? Is there something you can do about it? Have you neglected your body, your face, your hair for a couple of years because life got into the way and now you need to change your lifestyle so you can make a difference? Then please go ahead and do that. But it's not helping you putting yourself down with those words, that negative self-talk, that negative self-criticism. Every day is damaging you at every level because every time you say something about yourself, your subconscious mind is believing that. And again, you say it tomorrow and again and again, that becomes the new program in your subconscious mind. And your subconscious mind will keep playing that program and that's exactly how you start feeling. So even if your skin change and even if you lose that weight, you will still always think, that, oh no, no, I, I don't like my skin. I still think I need to lose a little bit more weight. I, I don't look good. You see, everything starts from the subconscious mind. Now, let's talk about negative words negative thoughts. There's nothing you can do about negative thoughts except be aware I'm having one and how fast can I change it to a positive or move to action. Every time there's a negative word, okay, if I say something to make you angry or sad, why does your whole body change? You don't just consciously think, okay, Luke said something, I'm sad, it's in my mind. You feel it everywhere. The same thing with happiness, you feel it everywhere, your body, posture, everything changes. That because, that's because trillions of cells Trillions of cells respond to your words, other people's words, environmental changes. You hear birds chirp. Why do you feel so good? You hear the sounds of nature. Why is it so relaxing? You hear the honking of cars continuously. Why does it make you feel so horrible about yourself? Because everything has an impact on our cells. Now, let's go deeper at the cellular level. 
high blood pressure, cardiovascular, inflammatory diseases, inflammation. Everything in life within the body and in nature is flow. F-L-O-W, flow. A river needs to flow. You obstruct it, the flow is broken. Could be good, could be bad. Your blood, which is life, it carries prana, it carries oxygen, it carries nutrients. It's life for you. It needs to flow. If there's an obstruction, could be a tumor, could be a cyst, could be a fibroid, could be calcium buildup, could be plaque, doesn't matter. The flow changes. When the flow changes, we have a symptom. High blood pressure, inflammation, stroke, hemorrhage, all of that stuff. The flow has to continue. Now, our blood vessels have the ability to contract and relax. When they relax, the flow is perfect. When they constrict, we have problems. Our blood vessels have the ability to contract and relax for our own flight and fight mode and for parasympathetic nervous system. If I need to run away from the enemy, run, reflex, jump, all of that stuff, constriction, more blood to the heart, it's, that's how it works in different ways in the, in the uh, sympathetic nervous system. Now, whenever you're going through negativity or negative words, everything in the body constricts. And that's why you feel your body change. When you're angry, you clench up. Everything constricts, which means you constrict blood flow. But when we're in a positive state of mind, or we say nice things to other people, people to ourselves, we even say nice things to ourselves. I don't like my skin, but hey, I'm doing something about it. And if you can't do about something about it, hey, I don't like my skin, but hey, I like the rest of me. This is how I am. This is who I am. Does my skin define me? Does my weight define me? You need to do these self-conversations with yourself because every time it's negative, there's constriction happening in the body. When you're in constriction, you're in the sympathetic nervous system, not the best place to be if you have a disease, not the best place to be if you're in a relationship because then you're always gonna be fight and flight response. It's gonna be more reaction than response. Constriction stops flow. When you're constricted, you're contorted, you're angry, what kind of flow of words do you think is gonna come out of your mouth? Not the best, right? Not the best. So constriction doesn't work for us. It works for the body at an intelligent level. You're working out, a muscle contracts, relaxes, there's constriction, there's flow, all of those things. But the important thing to understand right now is what words do we use every day? Oh, I shouldn't eat this ice cream. This ice cream will make me fat. No, the ice cream will not make you fat. Your behavior will make you fat. If you eat that ice cream too many times, overeat it at the wrong time. If you, make, if you miss your exercise, that's a lifestyle problem. That's a behavioral problem. You can't say the exercise doesn't work for you when you're not consistent. Okay, in a relationship between two people, if there is no gift of understanding, it is impossible impossible, then it becomes expectation. The flow is broken. When there's a flow in communication, it's great, fantastic. When the flow in communication is broken, we have problems. And that is why it is so important. You have diabetes, you have people, I keep telling people who have cancer, stop saying I'm gonna kick, I'm gonna kick this disease, fuck cancer, all of that stuff. I know you're angry, I know you're angry, but now you've created war with your disease. It's not a war. There's something in you. There's nothing to fight. You embrace it, there's a treatment. You use your mental strength to be strong. And that strength is used in your battle against cancer. But the moment you say, oh my, my this disease of mine, it's horrible. It's, oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? Constriction, sympathetic nervous system, out of homeostasis. And that is why your words matter. That is why your affirmations have so much of power when done the right way. That is why like, human beings like nice things. We like to hear good things. We like to hear pleasant things. Naturally, we don't like to hear things that are not good. A child can pick up a tone of aggression and immediately change behavior. So can adults, but a lot of adults pretend through this, right? So I'm not saying that you can't be an emotional person. You can be emotional and smart. You can be emotional and aware, but the words that you choose to use are having an impact on every cell in the human body. And it's difficult, sometimes we make mistakes. We get angry, we're human, 
Just because I talk about these things doesn't mean I'm a calm person. I have my own battles with anger. I have my own battles with outbursts. Like I remember two days ago, you know, in India, you have these telemarketers calling up all the time at odd hours. You're in the middle of a call on something and you, you're, you know, it gets disconnected because someone's trying to call you. And, you know, sometimes I lose it. And I say, like, where do you get my number from? Why? And, and you get angry. You have an outburst. OK, that's human. Part of the human spectrum allows anger. But what we do with that later, how quickly can I calm down? How quickly can I realize that? Why am I giving my power away? So we learn from these mistakes. A lot of people aim for perfection and they're like, oh, I got angry again. This is not working for me. I'm bad. I'm horrible. I'm cool. I had an angry moment. It doesn't make me an angry man. You had a weak moment. It doesn't make you a weak woman or a man. We need to understand the words that we use are extremely important. You have a disease, your relationship. Today, every, oh, my relationship is toxic. Well, guess what? Now your subconscious mind and every cell believes everything is toxic in that relationship. And how does the body behave when there's toxins in or out constriction, fight and flight? Okay. My relationship isn't good. What action am I taking? What am I doing to make it better? Am I getting out of this relationship? Am I fixing it? Whatever. But terming it makes you a prisoner of the very words that you use. I'm fat. No one will like me. Guess what? That's exactly what's going to happen. There are a lot of thin people who have the same problem. I'm thin, nobody loves me. It's not about you thin or fat and nobody loving you. It's about the words that you're using. When you use these words, you already send a message that you're not good enough. You're not deserving of better health. You're not deserving of recovery. You're not deserving of a better body. You're not deserving of a better partner. You're not deserving of abundance. It's so important for us to reflect on these things because when you keep looking at social media and society, you're constantly being programmed how to think, how to feel, and you're losing that connection with your spirit, with your authentic self. And that is where all the problems start. We can never be the same as anyone else and no one can be the same as you. Drill that into your head every single day and start to live your life out of your authentic self. You don't like something, change it. Move to action. Complaining and blaming will not solve any of your problems. In fact, it will create a negative energy within you and constriction again. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, breathe deep, and remember, you care is all about you.